After the Second World War, there were a number of trials that brought the criminals involved in some of the worst war crimes of the conflict to justice. The most high-profile set of trials was the Nuremberg Trials, in which many of Hitler's remaining inner circle, who survived the conflict, were brought to justice. Hermann Goering was the most high-profile man to face the court, as was Rudolf Hess, but many more who were imperative to the Nazi cause faced the judges. One of these was Albert Speer, the man who sometimes has been described as Hitler's architect. Whilst facing the judges, Speer managed to convince the judges that he knew nothing of the concentration camps and had no doing in the Holocaust. For this, he tried to portray himself as a good Nazi, and by the skin of his teeth, he managed to escape the hangman's noose. Later evidence would emerge, showing how he lied in front of the court. It was clear that he did have knowledge of the Holocaust, and was involved in some of the extension work to Auschwitz, and in particular the gas chambers, as the Holocaust continued. Because of this, he was directly involved in the extermination of the Jews, and probably should have been sentenced to death. Today we look at how Albert Speer escaped the hangman. Remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Albert Speer became a member of the Nazi party in March 1931, and in his early life, he had completed his studies to become an architect. He quickly rose throughout the ranks of the Nazi party, and in particular gained favour with Hitler as his influence grew over Germany and European politics. Speer was asked to submit designs for the Nuremberg rally, and he then met with Hitler and discussed his plans to build impressive and huge projects across Berlin and Germany. Hitler invited him to lunch a number of times, and they had a great respect for each other, and throughout Hitler's time in power, Speer held a number of different positions. He was rewarded by Hitler with many large commissions, including rebuilding the whole of Berlin, designing the parade grounds of Nuremberg, and helping to make the Nazi party look huge and powerful during the rallies. He maintained being close with Hitler, but in 1942, as the Second World War was in full swing, Speer was given the office of the Minister of Armaments and Munitions. This was an incredibly powerful job to hold during the Second World War, as he was placed in charge of overseeing the production of armaments, weapons, military vehicles, transportation, materials and industrial production. He was in this role credited with performing an armaments miracle, and he produced impressive statistics, increasing production sixfold in munitions, fourfold in artillery, and this was shown in propaganda across the nation. He was a gifted manager, however one of the reasons he was able to improve production so much was due to the fact he used forced labour on a massive scale to improve production in Germany. He continued to force many slaves into work, and many prisoners from concentration camps in particular were forced to work tirelessly in the German war industry. He expanded the system of slave labour, and the majority of workers did come from camps. We know very well that during the Holocaust, many were forced to work in excruciating conditions, with very little food, and if they did not work hard enough, they were sometimes executed in cold blood and were punished horrifically. Speer must have had knowledge of the Holocaust, and after the Second World War it was proven that he did so, and that he was prominent in using prisoners from concentration camps. This was a major sticking point at his trial, and when Speer escaped the hangman's noose, unlike many of his co-defendants, he would lie to the judges and not tell them everything. As the war came to an end, he arrived in Flemsburg, where the new German government was established, and he realised that he could probably expect no mercy when he was captured. Albert Speer was arrested and interrogated, each day he dressed smartly in a suit, and was pleasant with his interrogators. He portrayed himself initially as an honest man, but he quickly knew that his best chance to survive was to cooperate with the Americans, and make himself very important to them, and also offer remorse for the Nazi war machine. He told his interrogators great details, and offered an insight into Hitler's inner circle, and it was clear he thought he could be declared a war criminal. After the members of the Flensburg government were taken into custody, Speer was also arrested in his bedroom, and he stated, So the end has come, it was all only kind of an opera anyway. He was then told in September 1945, that he would be charged with war crimes and placed on trial at Nuremberg, along with the remaining members of the Nazi party's high command. This trial in particular was designed to show everyone that their crimes would not go unpunished. 
and the Nuremberg trials the prosecution showed footage of the concentration camps as evidence, shocking all those that were there. When Speer saw the footage, he was said to have been moved to tears, weeping as he witnessed the suffering. During his cross-examination, he admitted to using slave labour from the concentration camps, and he admitted that he ordered those who were slacking with their work in the labour camps to be sent to concentration camps to work there. He claimed that the final solution in the extermination of the Jews was making it more difficult for him to meet his targets in armaments production, and also that he wished Jews could have been evacuated to work for him instead of being sent to their deaths. Speer maintained his stance that he had no direct knowledge of the Holocaust during his trial, and he later stated that the only ill feeling he had was being uncomfortable around Jews. Speer at the trial then continued to deny his knowledge of the Holocaust, however the evidence put forward to him about his use of slave labour in factories was incredibly damning. He continued to say he had no knowledge of the gas chambers and the final solution, and he went even further. He bizarrely even claimed that he had planned to kill Hitler allegedly two years before the end of the war by dropping a poison gas canister into the air intake of the bunker. When he said this, the other co-defendants laughed, including Goering, who laughed wildly at hearing this. He did not also deny being present at the Posen speeches in which the Nazi leaders first regarded the ongoing extermination of the Jews in public. He claimed that before Himmler made his speech about the final solution, he had left. However, inside this speech, Himmler even addressed Speer directly and referenced him a number of times, casting doubt on this. Albert Speer portrayed himself as a Nazi, but as a Nazi who wished to accept what they had done to the world, and he realised that the world wanted an apology, and this is what he gave them. He apologised to the courtroom, claiming he had responsibility for the use of slave labour. It was this apology and his insight into the Nazi party and the other defendants that ultimately sealed his fate in prison, rather than at the gallows. Now after the trial, and later, after Speer had died, evidence was put forward that placed his testimony in doubt. There has been a belief that Speer portrayed himself after his release from prison as the good Nazi. He wrote his autobiography and published it, and also appeared regularly on chat shows, discussing the inner workings of the Nazi party. Historians have considered that it was likely that Speer actually did have an intimate understanding of the final solution, and he was involved. For example, it was under his ministry that gas chambers were built and expanded in many of the concentration camps, and he performed extensions of different camps, such as Auschwitz. One damning piece of evidence tears up Albert Speer's reputation as a good Nazi. A photograph emerged after the trial that showed him with slave labourers at Mauthausen concentration camp during a visit in March 1943. If this photograph would have been present at the trial, it would have ripped his defence to pieces, showing him for what he was, a liar, who obviously knew about the Holocaust and the final solution. This wasn't the only image either. He was photographed at other concentration camps, but more evidence would come. After his death, a book was published, claiming that he ordered Jews to be evacuated from their homes in Berlin, and he's considered today to have been a man who grossly deceived the Nuremberg trial. His former assistant had detailed records that over 23,000 apartments had been seized from Jews, ordering 75,000 people to be deported and rehomed. His assistant was still so shocked after the war about Speer's lies that he decided to publish this evidence. The prosecution did not even know that during the final days of the war, Albert Speer had driven throughout the night, braving Allied bombing raids to recover his art collection from his friend's home. He deposited then 30 paintings in a Hamburg bank. These paintings had been brought from a dealer who was known during the persecution of the Jews for ripping off Jewish art dealers and stealing art, sometimes giving a fraction of their true value. He told the interrogators these paintings had been lost. He later claimed that the Nuremberg trials stand for me still today as an attempt to break through to a better world. Still today I acknowledge as generally correct the reasons of my sentence by the International Military Tribunal. I still today consider as just that I assume the responsibility and thus the guilty for everything that was perpetrated after my joining the Hitler government. Albert Speer was one of the greatest liars of the Nazi party. His work during the Second World War was a death sentence to many, 
with the conditions of the concentration camps and the lack of food coupled with the intense demand for slave labour, which resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands. It's been established now that his deceit during the Nuremberg trials and his post-release celebrity status was all carved out of his intimate knowledge of the Holocaust. He was ultimately a man responsible for the ill treatment and the deaths of hundreds of thousands. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.